Chat JBT. Uh, they came out with Chat GBT5. Let's go into it, y'all. Welcome into CBS News 24 7. Open AI launches GPT 5. It's the latest generation of the artificial intelligence technology that powers Chat GPT. Open AI says the new model is faster and smarter than ever before. It comes more than two years after the release of its predecessor, and expectations are high. So I want to bring in Jacob Ward, technology journalist, host of the Rip Current podcast. Thanks for being here. Also, the author of The Loop How Technology technology is creating world without choices and how to fight back. Okay. First things first, we're talking about this release. Right. Okay. Of chat GPT five. Right. Um, how is this different? Well, it is faster, but it's much more than just fast. Okay. It is in the past. You basically had to choose which flavor of the technology you want to use for a coding task or to write a piece of poetry or to make you an image. In this case, all of those options go away, and the one that's available for everybody right now is GPT-5, and it's going to do everything in theory. It is okay. supposed to be able to do all these different tasks, and when you ask it to do it, it will make its own decisions about what kinds of tools and techniques it should bring to it. You'll watch it think in a new way. It is imposing what's called a reasoning model uh -huh. on the process, where in the past it was really just predicting what words are coming next or what pixels should come next. Now it's thinking things through in a deeper way. That's what they With say. With opinions? It definitely <laughs> has some opinions, okay. right? And it also, in theory, will hallucinate less often, make mistakes less often, they say, and mm -hmm. it will also negotiate with you. If you ask it how to make explosives, it will actually say, why do you really want that? Okay. It will negotiate with you about what's going to be a more dangerous use of it. Well, so, so basically, um, all right, so if you was to go into previous versions of ChatGBT or even Gemini or any other AI model, um, they were trending toward this in the first place, but now they're basically trying to simplify it. So the simplification of it is that it should be smart enough now to where it could determine exactly how how thorough or what what pathway you want to take. So let's I'll give you an example, right? Let's say, for example, that I'm just trying to find out some information on something. And I say, well, you know, what year did Magic Johnson get AIDS? All right. And I wouldn't have to type anything on that. But it's much different if I was to say, hey, um, create a, you know, if I was to put in there and I would say, hey, I'm a project manager and I need to manage different swim lanes or whatever, so on and so forth. And so this is what it is that I need to put together. It's not just going to spit out information, right? You would actually have to say, hey, I want to create a canvas model or I want to use canvas to create a report that then spits this out so that I can either create a Visio document. Sorry about that. Oh, man, I wasn't even plugged up. That's why. I got it. That's not good. Sorry about that. It wasn't even plugged up. So my my camera holder died. But um, basically what that would allow for me to do is I would have to differentiate exactly what I wanted to use. So I could use Canvas. I could use Deep Research. I could use um, I could have it cold. Right. And so basically I would have to designate what level of technology I wanted to use in order for it to spit out the right the right information. Now, with these newer models, and I'm sure that Gemini is following right in its footsteps, yeah, you would have to be very specific. So I'll give you an example. Let me go into Gemini real quick. And I don't usually go into this um, on these channels, but like I'm using Gemini Ultra. And let's say I go down there. So if I was to ask Gemini something, and I would have to either generate a VO3 video. So a lot of times when y'all go on TikTok or you go on Instagram and you see people saying stuff like, hey, you know, they create these videos and it's all based off of prompt engineering. And I got a video inside of the Patreon that deep dives way more into this. So y'all should go and join the Patreon and watch it. Or you can use Deep Think or you can use Deep Research or you can use Canvas to spit out basically HTML code and all of that. Now, in an ideal version of chat GBT5 and then the future version of Gemini, what you're basically seeing is people being able to tell it what prompt, basically use the prompt, 
and then it'll figure it out on its own in order for you to have or, or in order for you not to have to select what you want it to do. And it thinks and it's alive now and it reasons with you. And so for some people, I think that this is going to be much more of an effective tool when it comes to being productive. But for other people, especially people that look at chat GBT as their daddy, especially people that use it chat GBT as a companion, because it's a lot of people that do that. And a lot of people that actually become an interdependent on it in order to be able to do the things that they're doing on a regular basis. I think that it's going to bring you more into the AI world. It's going to be more real and you're going to, you're not going to be able to detach from it anymore. Listen, listen, one of the biggest things that I think that people need to start doing, if you are going to create a business around something AI related, one of the things that y'all also have to take into consideration is that you need to start figuring out how you can help people with AI addiction. It's going to be a booming business. <laughs> if I had the capacity, you know me, I got a thousand ideas. AI addiction is going to be a real thing. People hiring people to counsel their children, getting their spouse, ain't nothing like getting a woman to send you to counsel. Hey, babe, we need to do counseling because I want you to detach and this is going to help us save our marriage because you've become so evolved with AI. Bro, AI addiction and solving for the addiction and stuff like that is going to be a real thing. Watch, watch. We're going to come back to 2025 and I'm going to say, listen, y'all, remember when I was in that hotel room inside of Miami and I was telling y'all about AI addiction and how people were going to have whole videos and whole, whole ecosystems around solving for the problems of AI and all of this stuff, it is going to be a real thing. It's going to be a real thing. Yep, I've been a practicing um, therapist when it comes to AI addiction and, and its reasoning models, and I'm an expert on it. And so these are my credentials, and this is why I'm the person that's best suited to get you out there. So let's let's try a detachment, a detachment, uh, what is it? A detachment exercise. All right. So I'm going to take your device away. And we're, we're going to reset your device all the way back to before Apple intelligence. Okay. No, 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 no. I don't want to. I'm telling you, bro, it's, <laughs> it's going to be so many different industries that pop up around it. That's, that's good. A higher level of reasoning is what they're offering. All right. Well, let's talk about the money. Okay. So the AI industry pouring billions into oh, data yeah. centers and chips. They need to run these models. Investors clearly want to know when they're going to see their return. So is this kind of all of a, a way to kind of an effort to show what they are paying for? Absolutely. I mean, just to put it in perspective, the expenditures on data centers and chips right mm -hmm. now supposedly account for more of the GDP than what you and I spend. What so a lot of landowners are acquiring land in order to lease out to a lot of these companies that ultimately built these data centers that need cooling and these space. Um, and so they're leasing it out and a lot of people are getting, getting rich as that data centers are the new oil fields. Where's my button where I can go ding data centers, owning the land that they're building data centers on and leasing it out to meta Apple, open AI, Microsoft alphabet, Data, data centers are the new oil fields. I ain't going to say nothing. Consumers are spending. Right. It is estimated that $3 trillion could be spent by the end of 2028 on this stuff. And so those investors, of course, are going to want their money back. We just saw a couple days ago, Anthropic, a rival to this company, mm -hmm. released their version of this. This is, of course, something that, that Sam Altman and OpenAI have been basically hyping for about a year. They really want to show, look, we're making gains with this stuff. You have to consider, right, that they're going to raise about $40 billion this year. That's what they're on track to do. They're probably only going to make about $20 billion back. So they want to show this is worth it, you guys. You should bet on us because the future is going to pay off in a really amazing All way. All right. So let's kind of hold back a little bit. Right. So you've written about your worries that we're giving too much of ourselves into this technology. This new model really invites 
users to bring their lives into chat GPT, integrating right. what? The Gmail, calendars, contacts. Yeah. All right, so what is your reaction to all of that? I mean, you know, in the announcement today, they brought up an employee and, and his wife. It wasn't clear to me what her connection was to it, but she has cancer okay. and was describing in, in the course of this, you know, very slick production, how she's using GPT to basically decode her test results mm -hmm. as she fights cancer fights for her life. And so what they literally seem to be saying here is you should be relying on this thing for life and death decisions. There was another part of the presentation where they said you'll be able to let it rummage through your Gmail and your calendar in the future, that it, they're really saying you should take your life and give it over to this thing. This is a whole new world. We don't know if that's okay. Maybe, yes. maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that will be helpful, but this is absolutely un- charted territory and the fact that they want you to to have as much faith in their product mm -hmm. as their yeah it's a race of integration that's really what it's all going to be it's all about a race of integration and so they're racing to have people all right let me tell y'all what the race of integration is and maybe i can use a real example to illustrate this better for you guys do you know how difficult it is to get somebody that is an uh, android user to switch over to iphone and vice versa to get somebody that's an iPhone user to switch over to Android. Do you know why that is? It's not because of the devices. The devices is what we use as justification for why we're not gonna switch. Has nothing to do with the devices. As a matter of fact, I'll go so far as to say some of the very exact same glass cameras, they're used abroad between both devices and the only thing that divides them is the software and the technology that they're using in order to program the cameras. Sony sells cameras to both Samsung and Apple. Samsung's make, Samsung makes glass for Apple while Apple is trying to make their own. It has nothing to do with the phone themselves. See? See how they got y'all? It's the ecosystem, Sabrina. Absolutely. It is the ecosystem. It's the fact that your life is now integrated into it, whether it be your calendars, the, the insurance, whether it be the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto, the integration between your phone and your laptop and your devices and all of this stuff. It's the ecosystem, the ecosystem, the difficulty in you being able to detach and move all of your photos and your videos that's in the iCloud over into an Android device or even, even the point to where you're sending a green bubble or a blue bubble has programmed you to think ecosystem. It's the ecosystem. See, team Android, team iPhone. It's all dumb, but it's the ecosystem. Even me, I'm integrated into the Apple ecosystem. From the laptops that I use and stream on to the MacBook Pros and the iPad Pros that I use in order to do certain things that I take notes on, right? To, to all of the iPhones that I have, it's the ecosystem. It makes it easier for me to integrate and work. And so that is the thing that then got people loyal to a particular brand, not the brand itself. It's the ecosystem. And what you're now starting to see is brands fighting for you to be integrated into the ecosystem. Because guess what? People that are using, you know, Google and Alphabet's Gemini, they become integrated into the ecosystem. In the same way that people that are using open AI is becoming integrated into the ecosystem because the ecosystem itself learns you. And the more information that you feed it because you type and stuff and you're talking to it every day. Hey, what is my life like? Y'all talking to it. Y'all got whole boyfriends as AI. Well, guess what? You don't want to switch over because you've now become loyal to the ecosystem itself. And so now with it integrating your calendar and your Gmail and all of this other stuff into it. It is now making you a loyal customer for life. It is making you a loyal customer for life. And so the race is not just for the development of the AI itself. The race is for the people to become loyal to the ecosystem that then governs their life. And it's going to be 10 times worse than choosing between iPhone and Android. The ecosystem itself is going to be so integrated into the things that you do that you're going to become interdependent on it not using it in order to enhance what it is that you're already working on. Onaka says, open AI is learning me for sure. I know. Bro, listen, listen, listen. 
I am so in tune and hip and and knowing everything that's going on with all of this stuff. When I talk to y'all, I'm talking to y'all about real life in addition to whatever it is that they're telling y'all. When I talk to y'all, I'm telling y'all about real life instead of just telling you what it is that you think you want to hear about the information. There are some companies that could never and would never break away from Microsoft as a part of the ecosystem for which they use to govern their employees. From Outlook, making sure that Outlook is available for every single employee, all the way up into the AI that they're using, to the emails, to court, what, what they used to have, Cortana and all of that stuff. Some companies are so integrated into the ecosystem, they couldn't break away if they wanted to. It's the same thing that's about to be in your life. You are the CEO of your life. And now you are basically choosing your ecosystem subconsciously without even knowing it. And they're giving you what it is that you need. The race is to make you a customer for life. The race is not whether or not they want to improve AI and its models. The race is to make sure that you are so integrated into the company itself and it making it so useful that you wouldn't leave it if you wanted to. I know people that call me that is so integrated in open AI. Sometimes it's some stuff that it can't do that Gemini can do and some stuff that Gemini can do that open AI can't do. Right. And so they'll call me and they'll say, Anton, I just sent you an email. And I say, what did you send me an email about? OK, I sent you an email about a prompt that I wrote. This is what our conversations are like. Right. This is what happens in my real life. I sent you an email about a prompt that I wrote that I put in OpenAI uh, or that I put in a chat GBT, right? Because OpenAI is the company that owns chat GBT. I put in the email uh, a prompt that I wrote for chat GBT and it didn't really give me the thing that I wanted. It gave me the information, but it didn't, it didn't spit it out in this type of document and it didn't format it. Can you put it in Gemini and see what it is that it's going to spit out on your end? Yeah, sure. So I put it in Gemini. And then we start working through it. Jump on a Zoom call. Okay, so, all right, can you export that into this and that? Or is it something that it can prompt out? And then say, could you send that back to me in my email? This is the conversations that we have in now. Because I'm still a tech nerd at the end of the day, right? That's my, what I went to college for. That's what it is that I, that's what I did for a living. And so this is what I even do in my regular, regular life. But they're so integrated in the, in the chat GBT that they would just rather me Instead of using an alternative in order to see what it is, they'd rather me put it into my the AI, AI that I use the most in order to go back and forth. So, yeah, man, I pay attention to everything. My brain works a little bit differently. I know I look at everything from um, I look at everything from a UX UI perspective, so it's different. So. Somebody said, do they pay you to do that? No. No, they don't pay me to do it because this is, I mean, you know, it's like, these are my friends and stuff. 